and you you reach your hand in the box and like you go in with a fist and like they'll bite your whole wrist pretty much like up to your yeah 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 Yeah, they'll go what's up everybody and welcome back to the hook one pod hey we're back in the studio here at hook one um and today we've got a great guest with us we've got miss abby oberzat hey guys how's it going what's up thanks for having me thanks for coming on yeah, we've be got, fun. we're gonna talk about your brand a little bit we're gonna talk about bloom outdoors um talk about what got you into it um we've got another very powerful woman um in the industry we talked a couple weeks ago with lexi at the fish studio Lexi is very business savvy. She's very good at what she does. Um, she's calculated in how she kind of navigates around it. I would give you the same compliments. I think you handle yourself really well in a very tough industry, and and they're different. We're gonna touch on that. We're gonna your what you're doing is a lot different than what I'm doing, but yeah. in the same time, it's very similar. Yeah, there's a lot that goes on, like where there's product you got your son or merchandise or charters, or- right? you're doing work for your work i definitely agree yeah exactly um before we dive into that guys i want to thank you we've got 226 people signed up so far for our fishing derby it's been an awesome derby so far so far we've given away um some custom rods some hats some tackle it's been awesome if you guys don't know head over to our website and check out what's going on st Clair river only um right now there's an eight and a half pounder leading it so that's right are you in no, I'm not. All right, we got to get you in because you fish with Cody a lot. I know. I think he's doing some tournament coming up. Yeah, he's got one coming up too. Um, and then he's, I know he's been fishing for the Derby, but he's been busy at work. Yeah, so. we'll have to get on the boat. Yeah, soon. Sooner than later. Maybe I need to, I know. I need to get mine. Um, anyway, Abby, why don't you talk a little bit about what Bloom Outdoors is? Kind of the, we're going to dive way heavy into it later on, but kind of sure. get into what you started and why you started it. Okay. So Bloom Outdoors Company is an outdoor lifestyle brand, and long story short, I'm sharing how the outdoors is what helped me bloom as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, growing up, I I was very active in sports during, in high school, and it came to a point where my medical issues um, made me quit. So yeah. I'm completely deaf in my right ear. And I've had many reconstructive eardrum surgeries. And with, with the contact sports, it could rupture the eardrum that I just got just got put in, you know. So um, I decided to quit sports. And I turned to 4-H right away, raising animals. Mm-hmm. And th- through that was an outdoor challenge club, which pretty much they take you caving, hiking, snowboarding, skiing. Um, they teach you the survival of the outdoors, and so that's how I got into the outdoors. But I also started shooting competitive archery in maybe tenth grade. I got really competitive with it. I'd done it through 4-H, but uh, at the time I was traveling with my brother who was shooting 3D IBO, and we were traveling all over the U.S. Uh, those were our family vacations, and I was like, you know what? I'm traveling with him. I might as well shoot these competitions. So I did that all through uh, the rest of my high school. Mm-hmm. I got into that, and uh, Bloom Outdoors is kind of sharing. You know, it's all right to do things that aren't cool because growing up in high school, sports are what's considered cool. Oh yeah. And at the time, like there wasn't a lot of outdoor women um, in the, involved in the outdoors. Mm-mm. No, there was that 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 stuff wasn't going on. This stuff wasn't cool. Yeah. Um, at that time, it kind of leads me into what my next question was going to be. And that is what got you into the outdoors and into, you know, Bloom is really about, you know, hunting and fishing. I mean, everything outdoors, whether it's hiking or whatever, but it's very, it seems to be very rooted in hunting and fishing. A lot of the logos and stuff with the elk antlers, the trout, obviously, that I have in my head. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, BloomOutdoors.com, shameless plug. <laughs> See, you can't, be, you can't be afraid to give a shameless plug. We don't have ads. All right, well, it's Bloom Outdoors Company. Oh. <laughs> Bloom Outdoors Company dot com. Bloom Outdoors Company dot com. Um, but yeah, no. So when I get into like what got you into the outdoors, and I'm gonna beat you to it because I have a feeling I know what it is, but I have a feeling it's your family. So yeah. your dad and Cody, which for those of you that have been listening since day one, Cody is he's a good friend of mine. He did one of our handlining episodes way back before the YouTube. 
So if you're watching this on YouTube, go check it out. It's on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. But it's about hand lining because he's very knowledgeable at that. He spends a lot of time on the water. Always has. And it's all he does. He got his license. He had a boat. That yeah. was, it's like, that's what he did. Um, and to me, that was fascinating because I was sports, sports, sports. Like I, right. I don't need to get into it. I've told it a hundred times on the podcast, kind of how I got into it. But it was directly due to, you know, Cody and your dad would take us out. Yeah. I mean, they would, he would take us out pulling bottom bouncers um, south of the power he plant. He got into... Um... I mean, what would you call it? Trapping for a while. The yeah, we, we, we were actually, I was just and talking about that in the show. show. Yeah. Well, if they didn't drop the price so bad on the fur, we'd probably still be doing it. Yeah. It used to be good money trapping muskrats. We would dra- we would walk around the Bell River. Yeah. We'd walk around the Bell River like little dirt balls. You'd think about it and people are like, oh my God, you're trapping muskrats. But it's like, yeah, there's really good money to be had. Yeah. And like right now during, the, I mean, right now I'd say it's a good season mm-hmm. for it and there, there's not much to do right now i mean just else to fishing. Do. you might as well go trap shoot some fancy chickens yeah. that i like to call pheasants you know the pheasant yeah yeah pheasant ranches are always good um but yeah if it wasn't for cody and then obviously like jamie and jerry jamie and mr salisbury like that you got them they were always close yeah so i was fortunate enough to get in there and and if like i was talking i was actually talking to your brother the other day because i'm trying to convince him to help me run some charters oh really and i'm like dude you got me into this thing like come on let's go yeah like, let's do it now you want to go fun. i don't know it's a tough cookie to crack that would be fun um yeah my so what got you into the, them yeah what got you into the outdoors like you've been doing this for a while yeah i mean literally since you were born most likely yeah i've always been involved i mean there's pictures of me um i i would my family as in my dad and brother would shoot the animals and I'd be there playing with their eyes and their guts <laughs> with sticks. So I've always been around and uh, I went on the youth hunt a couple of times and I had some patience that my first deer was going to be a buck. Mm-hmm. And I've yet to beat that. It was a beautiful nine point. It was. And I, I mean, the story of that even just like crazy because I had a volleyball tournament mm-hmm. and I was getting ready to go out on Harsons Island the next day. But I couldn't because I, I had that tournament. And I um, I was like, you know what? I'll go in the backyard. I yeah. never see anything back there worth shooting. Never have had this buck on camera. And my dad and I are actually shooting or hunting together. And we're munching on a bag of goldfish. This buck comes out of nowhere. And I just smoked him. With, I mean, I was shooting with a gun. I wasn't yet really. Right. Um, yeah, it was cool. I watched him fall right there. And. That was a good time. My dad's always been there for me when uh, it comes to hunting. He really got me into it. He got me into the business aspect with his business that he had. Yeah, if you guys have heard of the Stink Stick, yeah, it's he, not, he doesn't he, do that no more. He sold it to Conquest yeah. then, so to a uh, wick dispenser that you put u- urine in, in the, uh, well, you put dough urine in the bucket will come up and smell that. Yep, yep, you hang it from the tree, right? Yep. And they come up and they smell it. And yeah, you blast So it. that kind of got you into, like you were mentioning, that kind of got you into, like, the shows and mm-hmm. kind of like what this, it really, like, the shows and everything like that, that's the side of the, indus- the industry I was really happy to kind of bring to you guys and show you because it's a totally unique thing. Like, going to the show as a consumer is one thing, and then going as, like, a supplier, retailer, distributor, whatever yeah, is, like, useful. They're stressful, but they can be so, they're super stressful. You got to realize you're not there for fun. Right. Like the booth space costs money. The people in the booth cost money. Not for being me, it's at like home. getting your name out there. Yes. It's a good advertising. And then you start doing it. So like we've, we've been doing the show now two years. We're going on a third year. We've already got our space. We've already got our booth. We're ready to go. Like, you know who you're going to see. Yeah. You get into the, the ring. Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, it's tough right now. It's, so I do taxes full time, and uh, it's also about, like show yeah. season, and so I work at the office. You know, Monday through Friday, I bartend on the weekend. So typically, also Tuesdays. So Tuesdays and Fridays, I'll bartend, and mm-hmm. Saturday, Sundays, it shows. It shows, and they're busy. And a lot of the times, it's not like the shows are ten minutes down the road because yeah, that doesn't do us any good. It'll be like on the west side of the state. <laughs> yeah, and you have some pretty big shows. Like, yeah, you've gotten to go and you know work with. Whether it be Pretty Hunter or you know whoever you've been, you've been able to go to what Nashville, Nashville, Atlanta. Yeah. Did you go to Atlanta? No, I just got back. That's from right. The ETF. Oh yeah, that was Nashville. Uh, that was a good show, and I was working for Pretty Hunter there. Mm-hmm. So I also got into I I traveled with them probably for good four years on and off, and I traveled all over to those shows. Yeah, 
Yeah, you meet a lot of people doing those shows. Like a lot of people that is good for business mm -hmm. as far as like relationships. And then a lot of people is good for business as far as consumers getting your name out there. Cause you know, you're in the same boat. I talk about how we're in a different industry. I'm in the fishing industry and you're more in like the clothing and retail. Yep. Right. So it's like, but we, we operate the same in the sense people are going to buy our product or shop, shop our product because of, because of who we are. And because yeah, of, we are, we are the face to our brand. Yeah, exactly. And, and they know that. So like, for me, going to a show, you can go buy your tackle anywhere. You can go to Cabela's. You can go to Shields. You can, well, not, not Gander Mountain anymore. But you can go to any of those big box retail stores and go get stuff. But the reason that they come to us is so they can talk to us and they can talk to our people. Right. And they can hear, hear our stories and we can help yeah. them. If they have any questions, you know, hey, do this, do that. People can come up to you. Hey, you know, I saw you did that elk hunt. How did you guys go about doing that? Right. You're not going to give them the X of where you hunted. Right. You can give them a basic of how to do it, and they feel a little bit more comfortable asking you yeah. than some random outfitter. I've shared some great stories and heard some great stories at shows, and it's just uh, such a re reward to like hear people what else they're going through. Because well, obviously, my my uh, brain came up through my medical issues, so like hearing some other people that also thrive in the outdoors to recover is really rewarding. Yeah, and then like I've had people ask me to sign their head before. I know. It's like, like me. You want me to sign your hat? Are you sure? Are you, are you sure? You're looking around. You're like, are you in the right booth? No, but I mean, it's cool. It, it's it's a testament to like what you've grown. I mean, shoot, we were in Grand Rapids with Pat, and a little kid walked up, and he's like, "Would you sign this?" And I'm like, "That's awesome." Yeah, it is pretty cool. It's cool it's because it, it shows that it's we don't just do it for ourselves because we like obviously we like to make a living doing it, and you try to make a living doing it, but it's for a bigger purpose yeah right I like agree. you donate a lot to house is it house in the woods house in the woods yep they're a good organization in maine so part of my profit goes to them and yeah so i started my business on july 4th yes of 21 and that's a huge date for me because if it wasn't for the military sacrificing their lives like we wouldn't have the freedom to work for ourselves nope that's why that flag's hanging right there with reunite the fight yeah, same thing i agree and so that was when I wanted to open my business because of that. And um, I also wanted to give back because outdoors is what helped me. Yeah. And, yeah, this organization takes veterans and their families out. And it's not even just out hunting. It's like camping, going to the cabin in the woods. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty sad story, and you can read about it online. Yeah. Um, yeah we'll, so put, we'll put the link. Guys, you know how it goes. Down below in the description, the link. Yep. So I'm really happy to be able to have them. And part of my um, after tax season, I'm trying to get out there and do some mm -hmm. volunteering. That's awesome. That'll yeah. be really cool. Maine's a really cool place. Yeah. Um, so got my handy dandy notes here. What do you love about the outdoors? What is it about this? Indi like, why'd you choose? You could, you could have done a hundred different things. Why are you yeah. doing this? <laughs> Man. I think it's, uh, well, obviously, it's where I find peace. I'm sad I go outside. If I'm happy, I go outside. Like, I thrive in the outdoors. Yep. I love to cook outdoors. It's such a different feeling. Um, to me, though, it's about hunting. And I think there's no better feeling than watching the 360 of an animal. She just said it's about hunting right here on this fishing <laughs> podcast. Yeah. I'll take it. I mean, we can I'll do take it because it's outdoors related. No, no, no. I'm with you, though. Explain that a little bit. Yeah, so I think this really, I really, it came to my attention doing it by myself one day. Mm -hmm. I'm catching up on Grey's Anatomy on the couch, and I let the dogs outside, and there's two goose, or two geese in the pond. And it's pouring rain, but I go outside in my pajamas, run towards the geese, and I shoot one. I mean, my brother's like, oh, they gotta be banded. They're not flying right now. They gotta be banded if they're in the pond. So I go outside and I shoot one and I go, I breast it and I cook it all within like two hours. And like, yeah. it's just so cool to be able to be like, I provided that for myself. Yeah. And I think that's what I love about the outdoors. The You're most. missing a shameless plug right now. Um, Wild Game Wednesdays. <laughs> yes. Yes. There we so go. So I share um, Wild Game recipes. I love to cook. I love to be in the kitchen. And uh, yeah, go on my website and. We got venison, we have fish, we have elk, we have antelope. Egg rolls and yeah. casseroles. <laughs> like being and, like those little shooters look delicious. Those, uh, what was it? They were the... Um, shooters. It was like 
They were still... Is it recently? Yeah. The, oh, the they got me. I can't even think of what they're called now. We're horrible. They're like wontons, but they're not wontons. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know what, you guys? If you really want to know so bad, BlueMyDoorsCompany.com. It's been a day. It, well, I mean, you guys are in the thick of it. You know, you and your mom do the tax company thing in tax season. Yeah, it's rough right now. It's a grinder. But the recipes, they used to be once a week. Every Wild Game Wednesday, I would do one. They'll get back to regular scheduling once it gets. I mean, no, I broke my leg, and I was like, "I'm doing, I'm doing once a month." <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. I, I'll tell you what, I, I don't want to bum these guys out, but there's gonna be a couple weeks stretch here through April and May where it gets really busy, and we're gonna sh- we're gonna do our damn best to get an episode out every week. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but the content side of this business is very difficult. Yeah, stressful. For it's sure. very difficult. Like you were saying, Abby's got. She's got 20 minutes to run from the tax office to the bartending job. And in that 20 minutes, 15 of it's going to be spent putting together a post for Bloom. Yeah. Because it's, it's like it's you awesome. just can't stop. You know, the thing is, you can't stop. Like, our, our people on Facebook are cool. It seems like your people are really cool on, on social media, too. The com- yeah, the comments are really cool. But some people are like, oh, my God, you guys post. And I have friends that come in and do like, oh, my God, dude, you're posting every day. Like, yeah, that's that. I know. You telling really- me that tells me that it's working. I read things. It's like you need to post four times a day, like six stories. And I'm like, oh, my Lord. It's literally like to do. Man, it's going to be hard. We have. And you want to be personal. We do, have some older, we do have some older clientele tuning in. But it's very hard. Like social <laughs> social media is a full-time job. Yeah. It sounds. You just won't get it. Like, no, it's not a full-time job. Yeah. But like it literally is because everything like in. Right now, it seems like everything's changing because so many people rushed into it because it's like it really is a fun thing to be in. And like for someone that like for us that's young, you know, for me, it's like I'm absolutely going to take this leap because there's like I look at it like there's nothing I'm going to do in my 20s unless I get like unless I murder somebody that's going to like severely set me back. So like this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And you can like only go forward. And that's the thing. Like. Well, we're going to get to it down here, but like growing the brand in a small town is a totally different animal because it's like, you know, there's only 5,000 people in the whole town. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, 2,000 of them, 1,000 of them are the most loyal people because yeah, they know they who are. you are. Yeah. They know your family. They know your grandparents. They knew, it's, it's crazy. I'd say too, like that's the thing with social media. Like you're trying not to just be like, okay, here's a lure. Here's a hat mm-hmm. for my business. Like they're going to support you when they know you. And cause yep and uh your story and your they want to know you as a person and then they'll support you yep. so then you got to like hit on all those aspects too yeah and then also while all that's going on like remain different like right. you see what everybody's right. buying and like everybody wants to do their thing you're you know you've done a really good job it's tough because excuse me anyone from china or like overseas can put a lot of this stuff out and it's like you're you're keeping up to date. You're keeping fresh with your designs. You've constantly got new stuff coming out, but always cycling back the stuff that's yeah. been good to you. But it's definitely a learning curve. Yeah, I, I'm working on some new things too. There, I've heard, and I'm already planning for my three year anniversary, Fourth of July. Fourth of July is going to be a big one. You you mentioned that last time I was in the shop. It, it will bring in a different. Uh, Getting wrangled crew. by Uncle Sam. <laughs> And the thing is, too, is, like, I'm trying to not just focus on hunting and fishing. Like, I want to have the people that just enjoy the outdoors want to wear my stuff. Yeah, that was something interesting. Like, um, I talk I talk a lot about that with Frank, with his foundation, with Rags Remembered. Like, it's obviously we centered on fishing and, like, they do the clay shoots. But you don't want to focus, like, even here, like, I don't want to focus on just fishermen. Like if you're a boater or if you like to be on the water or if your lifestyle is on the water, whether you're a boater or someone that likes to view the water from shore, or right. you like to watch ships, whatever it is, if you're, if you're a watery person, if you're a fishy person, a, like yeah, boat, yeah, if you, you know, like, if you like, if you like that lifestyle, you know what it is, yeah. beach music, tequila, yeah. you yeah. know what it is. So it's like, if you like that, this is the place for you. <laughs> Bush lights, right? Like this, this is the is place for you. Going. Yes. So like, I know what you mean. Like, you don't just have to hunt. You don't just have to fish. If you like to hike, if you like to being outdoors, is, we're in the time where, I mean, you listen to podcasts, right? Mm-hmm. You guys listen to podcasts, right? Obviously you're listening to us. You notice how we have had no better help ads. Better help sends me emails all the time about sponsoring ads because they realize how important therapy is in, in modern day. 
I think some yeah, of the no, best therapy the best you can get is. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I like going and watching a sunrise or a sunset on the boat. Like a sunrise is a lot different because it's so quiet. Like a sunset on Lake St. Clair yeah. is, is something different. My mom's been going by every day by the beach before we head to the office. And I the set. sunrise. What does it do for you to see that? Yeah. Like I made it or a even... point to start getting up like well before the sun to like get some work done. And like, you know, now well before the sun is 6 a.m. If you get up at 6, the sun doesn't rise till 8 after the time change. I've noticed like um, in the winter, the snow, you know, there's that thing how it's so quiet mm -hmm. because it acts as like a uh, so, soft sunproof. It is quiet. Yeah. And like even like when you're hunting and stuff, like I, I'm telling you, I deer hunted for three years. I had a, a $1,200 Matthews bow. I put way, I'm not even going to get into it. I put way too much money into hunting. And I went out sat in the at, tree. every week and I sat in a tree. And the most deer I ever saw all day, two, two. And I went and sat in that tree every day that I physically could for three years. Now, I gave up hunting. And all I want to do is go back and sit in that tree. It was never about shooting the deer. Oh, never. That's what I try to explain to so many people is, like, it's not about putting the arrow through the animal or pulling the trigger or set like it is always about setting it's the hook. just it's always about setting the hook but yeah, it's not it's about killing them. With it or hunting but i mean even then it's not because like if you have a day out there where you're like you don't catch any fish you can still appreciate like what it is yeah, you know what i mean yeah i think um people don't realize like yeah it's not just about hunting i've seen the most crazy stuff sitting in a tree i've had like a porcupine almost attack me uh -huh. like even just like random, like you're like a squirrel. Like, you have like I have like a squirrel right here, and it's like, oh, I can't move. You know, I know. What I mean? it, it is pretty cool. And it's you've cool. gotten to do some unique, like expedite. You've gotten, you've gone uh, noodling. I did. Yeah, you've gone noodling. I'll have to get some of these pictures. I'll flash them up. But you went. Yeah. So, for those of you that don't know noodling, and uh, if you want to boost your uh, not self confidence, but like your uh, what's the word? What are you scared of in life? What's that word? Anxiety? No. Fear? Yeah, if you want to, like, boost your fear, go noodling, because once I did that, I was like, I can do anything. I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead and explain noodling first. Uh, this question would be stupid if they don't know. So noodling is a catfish. You're noodling it for a catfish, and you're pretty much um, in some nasty, musky water. I mean, we're used to these pretty blue waters. It's like the Bell River or worse. <laughs> God, yeah. Saginaw River, it's, like, nasty. Yeah, and, um... There's going to be these holes, and you reach your hand in, well, we were in boxes, so they were bedded in boxes. And you you reach your hand in the box, and, like, you go in with a fist, and, like, they'll bite your whole wrist, pretty much. And then you, like, up to your Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they'll go that high. And then you, um you know, strain your hand and pull them out. Well, actually, sorry. You go in with a flat hand, and then once they bite, you fist them and pull them out. And, uh, you it's, fist them? <laughs> Right. That's yeah, a tough choice of words. I didn't know anyway. you're good at words. <laughs> I just like to hunt and fish. Um Um so anyway, so you just and yank yeah, them out? Yeah, and yeah, and they fight. And and they go crazy. There's two in the box. And uh and then cuz there's always somebody beside you like they have their legs on each side to make sure they're not coming out mm -hmm. and their legs are getting bit the whole time too, but they are feisty. How do you, so here's my question then. Where is this done at? So I was in Illinois, and it actually I do they have snapping turtles? Yeah, we check the boxes with a what? With a stick, but like a big stick. So you poke it, and if it's squishy, it's a catfish, and if it's hard, it's a yeah. You show? can feel around in there too. Stabbing the shit out of this fish with a stick. Yeah, that's fine. You, yeah, you wrangle it with your hand. You yeah, it. yeah. It, you know, it took me I think six tries. Go, I mean, the first try. Okay, that so scared the what? living. You, your first, your first box. Yes, yeah. that's no, terrifying. Here's the thing. There's the boxes, you know, where your head's above the water, and you're just your arms just in there, and you can breathe. No, I was probably four feet underwater, and the squirrel was stepping on my back, holding me down. It was so. Crazy. And you're just in there. Yeah, and like my legs are like floating out of the water, and she's like pushing me down. No but, way. Um, yeah, my first time, like going underwater you know i'm just like freaking out it's pitch black your eyes are closed and i'm trying to figure out how to breathe and like not hyperventilate at the same time and uh yeah so the sixth try it I, once you get a hold of it it's like i'm not fucking coming up here no. without this goddamn cat no. <laughs> like the, i was videotaped and i think i was like holding my breath for like 40 seconds 
And I was like, I didn't know I could do that. No. Well, when you want, when you're determined to get that thing out of there. Yeah. You and I, it. It's fun. We're, I think we're going to go again this year. That would be awesome. And I haven't told anyone yet, but I'm heading to Oklahoma for spoonbill fish. Spoonbills. Yeah, uh, it's all about hunting over here. See? Trout. <laughs> see, the spoonbill thing would be cool because the spoonbills are just these big, fat monsters. I'm really excited to hear about fish. it. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. really cool. I don't yeah. know much, so it would be cool to learn. Oh, they're unbelievable. They're they're prehistoric. You, they're not going to bite. You snag the shit out. Giant yeah. treble hooks just. Boom! It'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be sick. It's gonna be it, a fast seventy-two hours that I'm going there for, and we're fishing for one day. You're fishing for a day, and then yeah. you're zipping back home. Yeah, I'm actually oh. flying into Kansas City. Oh, really? Yeah. So Holy he's picking cow. up. And then we're gonna go to Oklahoma. That's and we're gonna play in Oregon while we're in Oklahoma for surgery. For white, for the white surgeon. Yeah. Ten footers. Yeah. I want to go to Oregon. Would be sweet. I want to go to Washington. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. I want to go to Washington really bad. I don't know. It's I'm not going into the cities over there. Yeah, I know. But I'd like I'd like to go explore their wildlife. Yeah. You've gone elk hunting? Oh uh, yeah. I mean I'm yeah, well, I just got back, but like it's been months. It's been months. It's been months. You're in taxi. <laughs> You're in taxi the middle. Yeah. 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 My dad and I've been doing it for four years, DIY hunts, um, in Colorado. Yeah, your dad was an your dad's an animal. Larry, like when I was younger, because again, sports, sports, sports. So when I was younger and like I'd come over <laughs> And he'd be explaining stuff to me and Cody. And he's like, does that make sense? And Cody would say yes. Everything. So I feel obligated to say yes. But I'm like, no. No. That's funny. Like, he was like, I don't even know. Like, it's insulting to call him, like, the ultimate, like, boy scout. Like, he knows and everything. Like, like, hunting, like, farming. Camp, yeah. Camp like, to hunting, to farming, to, to processing the animal. To, I was like, dude, you're the and man. And then he'll be like, you don't know that? No. Ew. No. New just bought this fishing pole. I spent so much time in your guys' pond. Just... I actually, uh, I was looking. We still have the pictures of you and Cody. Me, on... Co- yeah, oh, yeah. And I think Sharni and Fitz. Yeah, with yeah. the walleye. We do. We'd be doing the team dinner at the house for football, and we'd be like sneaking in the back. I always, I kept my rod and reel there because I had. I went and bought a rod and reel just for the pond because I had. I mean, you got it. Then you mom. guys would go catch the chicken. You remember that? Yeah, we got to catch them before the <laughs> owls did. Yeah. Um, IP chickens. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, what is it about Bloom that allows you to do what you want to do in this industry? Does it allow you to go on all these hunts? Is it the show season? Is it a little bit of everything? Uh, I'd have to say um, meeting people. I have some. Do this. Are we good? I see it. back <laughs> technical difficulties always <laughs> dude always all right um i would have to say meeting people is the best the best thing about this industry yeah i'm part of a good organization one mm-hmm. called adc it's american daughters conservation and that's actually who i went noodling with um there's a chapter in every state and we do like state things and then we do national things okay and I've just met great people. I've met great people along the shows, even just at uh, NWTF. I met great connections, mm-hmm. and that's actually who just did my last um, graphic design. So I actually had I met. Is it somebody. done? It's done. You'll yeah. have to show me off camera. Yeah, I got two of them. You showed me. You showed me what you were shooting for, and you showed me what you drew. Mm. And sent over. Two that I, okay, yeah, it's done. I got two. I have a I have a PG version and a and an R version. Yeah. Yeah, the whole version's gunner, for yeah. sure. A little story behind it. You gotta it. have that. Yeah. You gotta have a little bit of fun with what you're it's doing. It's such a hard industry. Like, it's competitive. The shirt that... Oh, my God. Competitive's not even... The shirt that sold the most, I I mean, not sold the most, but, like, the booth, the, they had the shirt that said, like, everyone loves the pecker, and it was a duck, like a wood duck. I'm telling you. And, like, anyone's gonna buy that because they think it's funny. Yeah. They you don't see, even care what the brand is. No, no. they And that's the thing is, like, a lot of it's just eye-catching. And, like, those shows you go to, like, people are walking around, and it's, like, bite my worm. You yeah. know? And it's, like, guys are, like, oh, that's so funny. And it's, yeah. like, dude, it's the most classic dad joke. But they kill. They crush every time. So it's, it's like, trying to do that while also staying true to, like, know, what yeah. you want to do. It is a tough. 
it's a tough call when you want to stay true, but like you're competing with so many other great brands. Yes. Yeah. Have you ran into any issues? So like you've been fortunate enough with like Pretty Hunter, but have you ran into any issues like being a woman in the industry or do you think it's a benefit or do you think it's moot point? It's whatever. Um, woman to woman, we do a great job of supporting each other. Yeah. I I've think, noticed that. I would say honestly, like male will do anything to bring you down. Like I enjoy the outdoors because I enjoy the outdoors. Like I don't know exactly what the state called what the name of this gun is i'll know how to operate the things mm -hmm. but i'm not gonna know what it like is the, like the like the my, like the very minor specifics right yeah 100 percent. like but i've noticed like guys will be like oh what you, what you shoot that with and like um just crazy questions that i'm just like yeah you know what i really don't know yeah it's more about like the the experience of the whole deal yeah like, that and like that's a big thing too about my brand like it's not about the biggest fish and the biggest animal that you've shot it's like your time outdoors and becoming who you are through yeah. the outdoors that's important that's so important that's it's literally we talk about it a lot like when i come into the office to deal with you know all the tax stuff but yeah. we talk about this business because this is what we live for. i mean literally this is what i live for now and this is what you live for is, yeah. is going into bloom and it's like you realize that support is is huge and the, i don't know the thing is is like you can't you've got to alter your business to a lot of the people that it's not that serious or it's not that like if i constantly tried to sell to the tournament fishermen and and stuff like that i wouldn't do that most of the people that come by your stuff are beginner fishermen they're they're beginners they're just getting into it they need the entry stuff the entry right. level stuff you don't have to be and that's what i want hook one to be known as is like hey man if you're fishing serious tournaments whether you want to be on the national scale or you want to be on the state scale We've got everything you need. Like, we've been loaded with guys coming in for this tournament in Saginaw. Oh, okay. That's right. also, I really want to be known as, like, hey, I had no idea what I was doing. We walked into the bait shop, and Pete helped set me up and do all that. Because, mm -hmm. like, that was on me. Mm -hmm. Like, if it wasn't from you guys or Jamie, then it was on me to figure it out with, like, Google and stuff. Yeah. And the only way to learn that stuff is the hard way. Right. And I think, too, like, circling back to um, ADC, mm -hmm. it, it's a good good place to join because there's typically i'm not gonna say like a pro but somebody that's advanced in what yes. we're doing so you're getting to learn all that yeah that's awesome. with um women that are also like-minded so it is pretty cool to check out yeah that is really interesting especially for any of the ladies out there and you know what we have we have a lot of guys that have whether it be their daughters or their granddaughters right. or nieces that listen and they try to spread this stuff. Like we did the one with Lexi. We talked about the women of the wild. Oh yeah. Um, and they were doing their ice fishing thing and we actually got good. We got some emails and stuff like, Hey, you know, thank you for touching on that. Cause I can get, you know, whatever, whatever girl is in your life in the outdoors, because I think it can be intimidating sometimes. Like even Allie is like, you know, some of the customers are intimidating and I'm like, yeah, they're still no, the nicest people. I, I know, but they're the nicest people ever. But you got to be able to talk to them. Like, you got to be able to have that connection first. And what I like about ADC or Women of the Wild or anything, really any of those groups, and I think obviously those co ed groups are the best mm -hmm. because it gets right. everybody together. But like, we all have something in common. We do. You and I have at least one thing in common for sure, yep. and it's the outdoors. Yep. Us and every single one of those people yep. that are tuning in. So, like, yep. that's what I love about those groups. Is it like no matter where you come from, who you are, what your background is, how much money you make, you know, it, it doesn't, none of that matters. Mm -mm. All that matters is, hey, you want to be a part of the outdoors? You want to do things in the outdoors? You want to, you know, advance yourself in that? Right. Well, like, I'd, I'd love to be able to start like my own type of group thing mm -hmm. through Bloom Outdoors. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I start off with a lot of opportunity. Because, like, I, circling back to to like colorado we diy it all and we have a huge base camp um and then we'll back tent into the wilderness and we'll stay up there for a few days and because of 4-h i've learned so much survival skills like yeah. i like i love camping and i could definitely like live in the woods for days and days and i'd love to like even just start with like a weekend camping trip mm -hmm. somewhere and have people sign up and teach them how to start a fire. Yeah. You know? you know, and that's really the beauty about like where we're at. That's why I love so much where I'm at as far as like hook one goes and not necessarily just like right here on the dock in Marine city, but also like in 
this area of Michigan and stuff like that. And like mm-hmm. for you, it's the same thing because you could meet people up, up North over on the West side of the state. Yeah. They could come over here. Yeah, I, I mean, it's five hours down to Hocking Hills. Like there's some beautiful places to camp yeah. and do all that stuff. Yeah, especially There's so much to adventure here in Michigan. Even it's unbelievable. It's on, un- it's so I personally, I think it's underrated, but I don't think it's necessarily underrated. I think it's just because the people that are here take it for granted. I know. Like, I used to want to leave this town all the time. And now, now that I'm older, I'm like, you know, it's not that bad. I told myself, I was like, as soon as I graduate high school, like I'm not sticking around this bum ass little town. Like I don't need, I don't need to be, you know, working at the same place. I did not want to get stuck in the restaurant doing that for as long as I did. And then I left and I was like, I miss the water. I miss yeah. the restaurant. The, there's I miss no lakes. Front. You yeah. say it's a lake and I'm like, this is like a pond here. See, literally when I was in Ohio, I, I went on a forum and um, this is why I, I'm always salty towards Ohio fishermen, but I went on a forum and was like, Hey, college student here. I'm looking to fish. I don't want anyone spots, but like what lakes are good to find? And like three guys just totally like shit on. They're like, oh, find your own spot. You poacher. Like we don't need any of you guys coming around. I'm like, dude, that's really like, that's really weird. And then I figured out why it's because one of the guys is like, here, go to this lake. Those aren't lakes, they're ponds. So those guys don't want you to go fish their pond because they're fishing their pond. It's nuts. No, like it's great bass fishing. Yeah, you're fishing a pond. Yeah. Like come to the Great Lakes. Go out yeah. there. Once you once you come here, it's yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you get to like people come out here and they see the freighters for the first time and stuff like that. And they're like, Oh my and that's God. stuff we And then they play it right next door. Oh yeah. yeah. I'll never take it for granted again. I know. I really won't. Like we were sitting out there yesterday. I was just sitting out there and I was watching the boats go by and uh, I was sitting out there with Allie, and I was like, dude, this is this is the best. Like, there's going to come a time where, obviously, I'm ready to get out of here and move out of the shop. Right. I, I don't need people pulling <laughs> outside my uh, bedroom window my whole life. Um, I think when I leave, I'm going to miss it. Yeah. I think one of the best places I've traveled, and, and I also fished here, was Alaska. I wanted to ask you about Alaska, so it's go crazy. Because, like, you have the water, mm-hmm. and you're looking at the mountains. Like, it's just... It's God's country. It's like Florida, like you have the ocean, yeah. you know, it's salt water. No, oh, yeah. Well, well, you have everything. Different. You literally yeah. have everything. You, you have everything. You got lakes. You have so many offshore fishing. Yeah. You have the streams for salmon fishing. You have the lakes. Yeah. It's, the mountains. It's just, it was unbelievable. And uh, I was thinking about going to be like a deckhand there for the summer too. That would be. We'll see. I got one more leg appointment to see if I need surgery again. Um, what a nightmare. And then I I don't know. I might do that. I might not. Maybe next year. It'd be a lot of fun. The halibut thing would be crazy because you'd have to either beat them with a baseball bat or shoot them in the head. The halibut would get crazy. Yeah, we, we hit them with a baseball bat. We were on the boat. And, uh, we They're so good, too. though. We did that with the tuna, too, in Florida, I think. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, I don't know what they call it. But it's like a little fish stick. Yeah. A little aluminum baseball bat. <laughs> Being a duck in. Yeah, like, right on the head. Yeah. I can't. I always said I wanted to be a deckhand. I offered to work for a couple of boats for free down in Florida, and it was like the problem was it was like around and like right after COVID. So I don't think a lot of guys like I don't. The other thing is I don't think they want some random kid from Michigan coming down to be a yeah. deckhand. Um, yeah, I wanted to do it so bad because I think deckhanding is the best way to learn. You learn how to tie the knots, you learn how to bait the hooks, you learn how to deal with the customers. That's how you learn everything. If you're the captain, like on those operations, you sit on the you you drive. You right. sit at the wheel, yeah. you drive home, you clean the fish. And then the deck the deckhand cleans it all up. But the deckhand's doing like a lot of the fishing fishing. Yeah. So, yeah, they are. I used when I like first started fishing on boats, um, I used to think the deckhand was the captain. Yeah. Because I'm like, they're doing everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they're like, No, that's the deckhand. Yeah, exactly. That's and then like the, the deckhand captain, makes sure. like a couple hundred bucks and then whatever you tip them. Right. But it's like I think that would be that would be a lot of fun to do. I have not been to Alaska yet, but it's like on my. I was well. I was talking to your mom because, like, they you know. Yeah, they've been there a lot. They've been there a few times, and I we were, I almost went there on our honeymoon, but it was like rainy season, and I was like, I don't think we want to do that. We ended up going to Cabo. Okay. Much better. <laughs> much better. Didn't catch a marlin. Still much better. Yeah, I just love the mountains and like being able. To, I mean, the summer there, uh, twenty four hours of light, so you can work and then you can like still go like, explore. Yeah, you can do whatever I you want. I feel like I'd have a great opportunity, even though, like, I'm away, but to grow my brand. I can be pushing they it. Brand and, and grow you. Yeah. Like, even though, even though you are a big part of, obviously, like, what Bloom Outdoors is, but, like, growing you, like, going out there and doing that and learning, though, like, 
some right. of the best guides that I know cut their teeth like out in Alaska and they were doing like the river trips, like the salmon trips and stuff like that. But it's one of those things. It's such a grind and it just like gets you into doing it, but it's so beautiful and it's so different and it's so cool right. Yeah. that it's, a, that it, it's not, you know, if you were doing it for 20 years, it'd be one thing, but like yeah. doing it for like months, a yeah. year or doing it for three months and then going back and doing it totally different. Keeps yeah. it fresh. I just met somebody. She, she was a deckhand, but it was actually of a boat that goes out to the commercial boat and picks up the fish. So they're, um, they're like, there's one boat at sea that never leaves. So they're yeah, always fishing. But yeah, they're always like, fishing. They probably, yeah. I mean, this, the boat comes in, picks up their fish, and then they come back. But it's like a whole different ball game. Like, they never fish. No. They are just the... They're just the, the, the middlemen. Yeah, they're just the middlemen, which is a totally... Like, that's the cool thing that I love about Alaska and, the, and even Florida. Michigan, not so much because yeah. we're really seasonal. Like, really, we're, we're warm weather for six months, seven months, maybe five, depending. Right? <laughs> so it's like it's different. But, like, Alaska, Florida, and even Alaska gets cold, but they, they just don't stop. They're animals. And, like, Florida... Texas, like there's so many jobs in like the boating and, and fishing industry that that nobody even knows about. Right. Like even, the middlemen. Yep. You know what I mean? Or like when we were down in Cabo, there was a whole industry and even in the Florida Keys, it's like it's everywhere, but in Cabo they did it like direct. Like the charter boats pulled up to these guys and they were in little pangas, twenty one foot little center console pangas, and they were all the bait fishermen. Yeah. And they were out there at three in the morning from three to seven AM picking up bait and then the guys drive by and like that's a whole yeah that's how it was in kind of sewer too like there's like the whole all the boats you know at the marina and you think like they're all just charters but some of them are bringing like um people on vacation out to charter and the rest of them are actually like going to fish for those stores that are around there no way yeah so yeah you've got you've got and then there's the job of just cleaning Dude, that's and they the just job sit around cool. there and drink beer and clean fish. Oh my god! All and they clean them in like three cuts. It's like down the gills, down the stomach, all the way down the fish. Flip it over if they're skinning it, it's done. It's, it was nice. And then they ship it. They like you said, they're catching it for the restaurants. They're catching it because they ship it all over the world. Yeah, we shipped all of ours home. Like it's crazy. It's oh, frozen. You shipped have it to. home. It's, it's so good. My last client actually who who worked there, she brought me some halibut. What? It was an eighty pound halibut. And I don't even like fish. I want to catch one, but I really want to eat one. I like fresh. I've had it at the. I've had it at like a couple of restaurants, but it's fresh. Would be. I mean, you know what I yeah. mean. Yeah, like perch and walleye. I hate. I don't like eating it, which what? is so weird. But Come on. I do like that red hot recipe that you it, shared. Sean Frank on uh, Frank, the website. Frank's 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 recipe. That's a good one. That's what we'll call it. Uh, that one is really good. But no, you're not a big fan. I mean. I've tried. Oh, we lived was in the house for ever. So, and I worked at the fish company for like four years. Hated yeah, yeah, all the fish things. Fish now. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's a, a good. Game. They do a good job there. They do a good job there. Um, do you think Alaska and Colorado are probably like your two favorite hunts? I mean, you've been on some. Ri- like you went down. I went to Wyoming for yeah, antelope. Or that's what it was, Wyoming. I was going to say down south. It was Wyoming. Yeah, I was supposed to go learn how to guide, actually. Yeah. I broke my leg. Yeah. It's it's nuts how everything works out. Broke it, that's, shattered it, however you want to say it. Side accident. Yeah, it wasn't good. Um, the thing that's fun about the outdoors. Well, <laughs> side by side. Yeah, blast. Um, but the Wyoming hunt for antelope. Like what? What would you say is one of your favorite hunting or fishing trips? Um, my most rewarding, I'd have to say, was my archery buck, just because it was my first um archery harvest, and I dead centered that heart. Like you could never. My it was just insane. You just don't think you could ever put a better shot on one? Like it was dead center, dude. That's awesome. Well, you guys did, you know, you mentioned that earlier, but like that was always Cody too. Like Cody always played football, basketball, um, and ran track for a little bit, but he always shot archery. Mm-hmm. And like I remember, me and like the rest of the crew would be like, "What do you mean you yeah. shoot archery?" It was during and he, you summer. guys would travel everywhere yep. and shoot. And like he was making money. Like he was making money that when he turned eighteen, he could like he had money. I was like, "Damn, <laughs> that's what we should be doing." Yeah. So we shot those competitions during the summer, and then um, winter was spot. We'd shoot spots. Yeah. Like three spots. Like inside? Spots. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I shot at MJC Archery. 
Yeah. And that was nice and close to home, uh, like a 30-minute drive. And then and they closed they, that shop, and they moved farther. Well, they moved yeah. to the other shop as their main, and it was just hard to get out that way. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the good thing about that, I'd never been there, but from everybody that I've talked to, um, especially with Jim, um, they just, it was a family. Oh yeah. So like it was Jim always was, like easy my to second dad. Yeah, it was yeah. always easy to go there. Coach. That's awesome. It's always easy to go there and shoot because I'd go like... there when I was in high school. I would bring my homework. I'd bring dinner. I'd bring my bow. I'd bring my other bow, and we. That's would... awesome. And then like everyone else too that was like my age who does the same thing. So then we're all hanging out. It was a good times. Yeah, that's really cool. What's it been like? Um, growing an outdoors brand in a small town. We mentioned a little bit about how it can be. It can be hard to get your name out there. It can be hard to get people to come visit you where if you were in a bigger town and there were constantly people coming through. Yeah. But they're also like, as far as like helping us out on social media and supporting and coming in and buying, like they're so loyal. Yeah. Oh, what, what would you say? Like, would you rather try and grow this in a big, I mean, you've been to plenty of big towns now. No, like, I can't even imagine like mm-hmm. being in a small town, you know, Best you, place. you have your supporters. Like yeah. I would say. Like a good six, I mean, I guess 60, 70% know our businesses. Yeah. I mean, there's the little bit that don't, but um, the, you have the supporters that are like, when are you getting new stuff? Or like, what have you been up to? Or like, you don't even know them, but they know you. Yes. And then they'll be like congratulating you on your success. Mm-hmm. And it's really rewarding. It's cool. And then like part of it's like, hey, man, or hey, lady, either way, like we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Oh, yeah. Like, if it wasn't for you guys buying the stuff, like, if it wasn't for my guys coming in right. buying jigs and buying tackle, like, hook one's not a thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm 100% um, self-funded. Yeah. So, like, everything I put into my business, I put back into my business. Yeah. I know. That's so. the same here. Like, I didn't, we didn't get any, we didn't get any of those loans. We didn't get any of those funds. We didn't get any extra money. Like, right. we, we started this thing from the ground up. I actually sold my house. And to what? I'm upstairs. I live upstairs. I'm in the parents' basement. <laughs> no, I'm just You're kidding. Really I my house. house. It was a good investment. It but I took some of that money and I started my business. It it was a great idea. It mm-hmm. it really was because like you're still you're what? How are you for? Yeah, exactly. Like you're fine. Yeah, you're it's, fine. Uh, it's slow going, but I think if I keep at it, it it can be something big. The best way I could explain it, like that I've noticed so far, is that it's exponential. So it's very slow going, and then like when you see a jump, it's like a major jump. Yeah, and, and then it starts you. rolling, and then it kind of slows down a little bit. And the big thing is money. Yeah, it's like it, it goes good when you start selling everything, and then it's like oh shit. You know, it's funny. I got to get more stuff on the shelf. I've seen so many like memes on t- um Facebook actually of like uh. You know, people will go spend like sixty dollars and think nothing of it, but when it comes to like fifty dollars for a hoodie of a small business, they won't support it. It's expensive. Yeah, yeah. it's expensive. Yet you're you're the backbone to our business, and, and they're supporting chain businesses. And really, like that was the thing that I thought was crazy. Like even in the restaurant business, I was always people are like, "Man, you guys are overpriced." Like, no, we're not. Go to the grocery store. Right. Like life is overpriced. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you that it's overpriced, but we're not overpriced. Right. Like guys come like, in and like I get it that the rod's expensive. Like yeah, it, the rod yeah, is we're overpriced. Competing at like, and like that's what they're selling it at Cabanas. That's what they're selling. Like you go to Dick's Sporting Goods and you can't find a Nike hoodie for under eighty dollars. Oh, no, eighty dollars, Abby. Eighty dollars for a hoodie. About like having to charge like sixty. Yeah, and it's like and now. and you don't even want to do it. You know what I mean? Like I know. And that's the thing. I think as you continue to grow. And you have more buying power. That's what this game's all about is buying power. So yeah. as you get more buying power, it's like then you might even see your prices go down. Like there's certain things in the bait shop where like I've actually been able to lower my price since COVID. Okay. Who can say they've done that? Right. Nobody. Like you don't see that happening anywhere. The only place you see that is small businesses that can that have the ability to do it. Because yep. I don't know. We're not here to I always say we're not here to get rich. Like financially, I don't think I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna try my damnedest to to you know bankroll. Yeah. But in life, like we're always gonna be rich. Mm, like this no, is what I do. This is what I love to do. Just like saying like the outdoors makes me rich. You know, there's some things like I want to be rich. Like we are. Yeah, like we are, and like that's what I tell people all the time. Is they're like, you know, I wish I had more time to fish or i wish i had more time to get outdoors like well how much do you get out like three days a week well dude there's a guy that only gets out two days a week yeah exactly 
And then the guy that two days a week is like, man, I really like to get out more. It's like, yeah, I feel you. There's a guy that doesn't get out at all. Mm-hmm. His boat's been in his garage all year because he's working or he's doing whatever. So it's like you got to understand that you know, you know, that is your reverse too. Like it's just time to like be able to slow down. Mm-hmm. Like when you're living that busy lifestyle and you get to make it out there for about two days or an hour a day. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know how it is when you go hunting. Right. Well, like you, phone goes on silent, right? Same thing when yeah. I go out fishing. And I tell people that all the time. People want to get people want to lose their minds. I want to come in here and. You know, obviously, politics is a hot, hot subject, and just kind of the way the world is right now. Like, it's just very, uh, you know, it's 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 rough. Yeah, it's rough. So, like, it's I tell people all the time, when I go out there, that shit doesn't follow me. That's good. When I get back to the dock, there's a lot of it, but like, I can put my phone on do not disturb, just like when you go in the outdoors. And that's that's whether I'm going out fishing or I'm just going out on boating or even if I'm just taking a, my dog through a walk in the woods. Mm-hmm. I don't need my phone on me unless it's playing music. Yeah. It, I mean, like, it's so hard because when you're the backbone of your business, like, you do want to, like, share those experiences, though. So, like, you want to get film. and mm-hmm. But, like, when I'm in Colorado, there's not even service at all whatsoever for, like, two weeks. And then there's no electricity. Yeah. So then it's really hard to plug my phone in. And so then I'm, like, picking battles of trying to film stuff for my business, you know? Because yeah. here I am out and about, and there's no uh, service. Um, and then I'm like, man, I don't know how these people get some of this film. But, I mean, they got people following them and the big wigs. And... It's I've, – I've been, I've been fortunate enough to see the production side of things that's, that's really making it kind of step back and be like, oh. And that was a big reason why we started this. It's a big reason why – when we were talking pre-show, like we don't need, I don't need a bunch of notes. All I have are things that I want to make sure I ask you, but it's not, it's not, it's not perfect. Right. Like, and it's raw. That, yeah. And that's a big thing. That's, that's why I like a lot of the content that you guys put out is because some of that shit is raw. Like, Hey, this is, this is reality. You know, we've yeah. been at a whole camp going, we've been at a whole camp for six days. I haven't showered. I haven't eaten real food. Yeah. And like that, we haven't seen shit. I was, I was probably on day six. I was doing daily videos. And I never made it through my whole time of being in Colorado because I got so behind. Yeah. On taking videos and my phone dying and pictures. But, like, those were some raw-ass videos. They, and they had, like, that's the best part about it. I do love, like, well-produced, well-put-together films, but that's not always how it is. I think that's the biggest threat right now in our industry is how people view our industry. Yeah, I mean, it's not every day you're going out and catching fish. No, like, we're not going but out. Well, that's and- what social media oh, makes right? it catch every day or flushing every day right but you know what i mean like we're not going out and doing that every day like every day you're not going out there getting 20 yards away from an elk and you're just picking the right one like no dude you're gonna get lucky to see one yeah to see one i mean i went and then you're gonna get really lucky to get your ass across the valley and cut it off and um pack it out and then wow uh, that's its own thing we went uh thank god Lane was there yeah three <laughs> years without an elk yeah, because this year, ow. That was my first, this year, first one, right? Yep. Was, That's awesome. It was unbelievable. That's and that was, awesome. it was just rewarding, too, because I just broke my leg, you know? Mm-hmm. Still recovering. Didn't yep. think I was going to make that one either. I mean, I knew I was going to make it, but I didn't know how well my leg would handle the hiking. The hiking, yeah, exactly. We're at about 11,000 elevation, That's great. eight miles up. There was a time we gained 3,000 feet in elevation in like one mile. Yeah, I can't. I have a hard time, like, even fathoming that, like, not being there and seeing it. Like, I've just got a hard time understanding that. But it's, it's on my list one day. Yeah. Maybe I'll tag along one day. Yeah. That's what I'll have to I do. I think we might have some I'll tag alongs next year. I just watch. <laughs> yeah. We got it down pat, though. I think next year was going to be good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You guys are really starting to figure out. And now that you're working on a team, like, your dad, I mean, no offense to you, because you have, you got to learn it. But your right. dad was doing a lot of that. And yeah. so, like la- even last year, like when you're able to, you're able to get in there and help. It just twice as fast. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And you guys were well together. I mean, obviously, father daughter. Like being a, that's that's a big thing. Like guys go on these hunting trips with these guys, and they're like, oh, sucks. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if I said this pre-show or, or during the show, but um, he's colorblind and I'm deaf, so we make a good team together. <laughs> Because I can't hear what way the animals are coming from, and he can't track worth of shit. So I, that's what I'm saying. Like, which you're, that was always remarkable because everybody's like, you can't track, you're colorblind. That's what they tell me. And I'm like, I know one guy that can. 
I know one guy that can. Yeah. I know there's probably a couple out there, but hey, we're already an hour. Wow. How about that? Yeah, that, that went by fast. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. I told you it would. Damn. I got a question for you. Serious question. What's your goals? What's your goals for Abby? What's your goals for Bloom? Like, what do you see kind of happening, like, within the next year and then maybe the next five? Yeah, so um, a goal that I'm working on right now for Bloom is to ship out to all 50 states. Mm -hmm. Kind of setting a reasonable goal there. Yes, absolutely. I'm at 20 states. That's awesome. So I got 30 more to go. Um, Like I said, I would love to get some day hunts or day trips or something together in the long run. Uh, I know, like, a lot of license probably go into that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would love to bring, like, Bloom National. That's goes, awesome. Goes along with the 50 states. Yeah. But just make it known. And, like, there's more than just sports when you're in high school. That's awesome. And then. I think you're on the right track. Yeah, Seriously. Thanks. I think, I think you're putting a lot of time into it. And you're, you're, very, you're very business savvy. That's typically the. the crutch is you're either really good at business or you're really good outdoors and it's you're typically not good at like it's really hard to do both oh yeah um so that'll be pretty sweet we'll be following along i mean that was the whole reason i wanted to do this podcast is like we talked about growing a brand in a small town but like you know that's the same thing with hook one like we want to be a, a really good bait shop but we also want to be like a brand like we want to be known for you know being on the water and having fun and being inclusive um, that's, that's what we do. Like you, you show up to hook one. If you have questions, you show up to hook one. If you want to brag, you show up to hook one. If you want to, you know, whatever the situation is. Yeah. And I, I think that's you're you know, you're building that with yours. Yeah. I'm trying. We'll get there. So, well, where can everybody find you? So if they want to find out what you're doing online, if they want to find your website that I already messed up once today, bloom outdoors company dot com. Yeah. So that's going to be the same for, um, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, actually. Bloom Outdoors Company. Yep. Bloom Outdoors Company. Cool. Yeah, Abby Oberzut also on Instagram. Abby Oberzut, yep. Because, I mean, you got your own thing. That's always, like, the tough thing is, like, um, what goes into the personal, what goes on the business. So, yeah. if you want to follow the full story, that's where to go. Obviously, the links are going to be down below in the descriptions. You can head over to the Bloom website. Check out what Abby's going on. She's going to have some new stuff coming out. Yep. I'm going to, yeah, we're going to do a pre-order soon. That, so it'll be my first pre-order. You're uh, you're really gonna like that. <laughs> I did the hoodie thing once. The last time I did the pre-order, much happier with the pre-order. Oh, good. It's a lot easier to have an idea of what's coming in because if yeah, the pre-orders just... go crazy, then you know that you have to order extra because it's going crazy. But if the pre-orders are just kind of him and hawing, then you're like, ah, all right, got to go for a new design. Yeah. Which sucks. That's, all, that's what I learned. Anyway. That's what you get out of it. Yeah, I learned it the hard way, but don't worry, guys. I got different hoodies coming for you. Someone's going to look something like this. It's a little logo, big logo on the back. Do you have anything else that you want to? Oh, man, I'd have to say for my my personal, though, I, I'm going to try and have a goal of hunting with a handgun. That's going to be awesome. I feel like that needs to come back. Everything's gotten too easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything has gotten too easy with technology and everything. Like, bow season drives me crazy when I see all these beautiful deer taken with crossbows. Like, I get it. Sometimes there's medical issues and stuff like that that go on. Or sometimes yeah. there's just not enough time to practice with a bow. But there's a lot to be said about the challenge of the kill. Sometimes, you know, oh, that's not 200-inch buck. No, but I shot it with a recurve. Right, right, right. It's yeah, there's classic. a story with everything. There's so many hunts that I have that have memories. It goes into a lot what we talked about with Lexi, how your tro your trophy is designated for you. Right. Like I don't need hundred and fifty inches to put that deer on a wall. I don't need a hundred I don't need a thirty yeah. inch wall to put I it on a wall. I mounted my first gun and my first bow of the animals. You should. So like my first uh archery antelope I mounted, first archery buck, first gun buck, first solo buck. That's yeah. <laughs> like it's cool, like you know, you've sh Shooting something by yourself is rewarding. Too. There's a story to it. There's a story to it. And again, it's more than just pulling the trigger. It's the story behind it that is the reason you're doing it. Yeah. You I know what I mean? More. And then especially when you get to make that, that those memories with your family. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing for, like, that's a huge thing for me. Is like if I'm with family and I catch, you know, we catch fish or we do whatever, I'm trying to immortalize those memories. Yeah. And then even, like, cooking it for family dinner, too. Oh, that's the bet. That's what you say comes comes all the way around. Yep. Comes all the way around. 60 of a wildlife. That's it. 
Well, hey, it's getting late. I really appreciate you making time to stop by. I know you've got a really busy schedule going on. We kind of had to move some things around to get this podcast in, but thank it's you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you didn't. You had a good time? I did. It wasn't too bad? No, it was my first podcast. I know. We're going to have to do another one. We're going to let you get rolling. We're going to let these people find out what Bloom Outdoors is and who Bloom Outdoors is. We're going to let you go crazy. you got a spoonbill fish thing going on. You've got, hopefully, some sturgeon in Oregon coming yes. on. Um, we'll definitely have you back on this summer. We're going to start bringing the podcast outside on oh, the dock. That'll be fun. Cannot wait to start doing that. It's going to be really nice to have a little bit different scenery than being trapped in this back room looking at my beer fridge. Um, I noticed that core is in there. <laughs> I know. There's a couple more behind it. We might have to crack them open. Other than that, guys, I don't have anything for you. Hey, one more time, thank you so much for being a part of the Derby. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Please give us a like, share, and a subscribe. It's You do a lot of social media, right? Yeah, I do. Is it free to like? share and subscribe I, I don't think it costs anything yeah it's like zero dollars and zero cents yeah dude so it's one of the best deals out there yeah i don't think you can find that anywhere it's one of the best deals out there to like share and subscribe guys i can't uh thank you enough obviously as the channel continues to grow we'll continue to do more stuff still waiting on my boat promise i'm going to get out on the water i promise these people some videos maybe you'll have to come out and help us get some of these videos down because I, I got a hard time doing content and fishing all at once. Yeah, I feel like I can do other people and not my own. So that's, we'll do that. Yeah, that's how it goes. Anyway, guys, we're out of here. We're going to drink some Coors Lights and have a night. Adios. See ya.